Ni är välkomna till den här disputationen och mitt namn är Bernhard Lindström och jag kommer att vara ordförande under den här tillställningen vilket betyder att jag inte kommer att säga särskilt mycket annat än inledningsvis och avslutningsvis. Och ni är välkomna till Master of Business Administration Beata Jungselius, uh, defense of her thesis in the subject of applied information technology. And the title of her dissertation is Using Social Media. We have a faculty opponent, uh, Richard Sailor Ling, and he is currently pro a professor at Wee Kim Wee School of Communication and Information at Nayang Technological University in Singapore. Before that, he lived in Norway for many years and worked for the Telenor uh, Research and Development Unit. He is the author of several books on the topic of mobile communication, such as The Mobile Connection, New Tech, New Ties, and Taken for Grantedness. He is also an editor of several journals, including Mobile Media and Communication and Journal of Computer Mediated Communication. He is founding editor of the Oxford University Press series on mobile communication. I think it's important to have some idea which people are on stage. So, um, we also have a grading committee, and we have Professor Mikael Viberg from Umeå Universitet. We have Professor Malin Svenningsson from University of Gothenburg. And we have Associate Professor Katrin Tidenberg, Tallinn University. And then we have um, a deputy member of the grading committee, which is Associate Professor Ylva Odenbring from University of Gothenburg. I should also mention that we have other people uh, central to this thesis defense, and this is uh, the principal supervisor, which is the Professor Alexandra Weilenmann, and the assisting supervisors, Associate Professor Thomas Hillman and Associate Professor Dick Stenmark. <laughs> now, <laughs> there is a... <laughs> There is a certain uh, uh, procedure to follow, and uh, uh, and and um, uh, to start with, we Beata will have the opportunity to make some remarks on uh, the formal, uh, uh, some formal aspects of her thesis. Uh, it's sort of the the idea is that you nail your your uh, text, and that text might contain some. Uh, typos, etc., that you might uh, uh, comment. And then uh, after that, I leave the floor to Rich. And then there will be a conversation between Rich and Beata. And it's uh, actually Rich the, that decides <laughs> when <laughs> that conversation should end. <laughs> and then he'll leave <laughs> to me. and. The, I will uh, chair sort of uh, an open seminar where anyone could uh, could pose question, questions. And to start with, uh, it's, it's it's a praxis that uh, the, the committee will will put some questions, <coughs> but it's open for everyone. And after that, uh, uh, we have a, we close the seminar. And then, I don't know, I think there is a gathering uh, downstairs in the coffee room where uh, you can wait for the, uh, uh, during the meeting of the committee uh, and, and uh, uh, then when the committee comes out, they will tell sort of the verdict. Okay, Rich and Beata, the floor is yours. Hi. 
yeah okay hello <laughs> uh, so there is actually I find I found one typo which is in uh, this is a clue it's in the Swedish uh, summary so uh, instead of naming it I suggest that if anyone finds it please let me know and I'll uh, toast you an extra time tonight so no no um, typos worth mentioning Yeah, that's it. That's my cue. That's your cue. <laughs> yeah. I'll try and do it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Can you ooh. Wait. That's Okay. Hopefully this will come up. And instead of seeing the road in Ann Arbor, Michigan, you'll see this. Uh, I've been asked to go through the, uh, the document, and this is the version that I got, so mine's not quite as, uh, uh -huh. uh, quite as clean as the other ones, but uh, this is the one that I'm uh, going to uh, refer to, actually also in relation to page numbers and so on. So that's going to be maybe a bit odd, but we'll work through that. Mm. Um, and I've been asked to sort of do a summary of, of what uh, you've been up to. Uh, and in general, uh, the main question is examine how people use camera phones in order to share images. I think at the broadest level, that's uh, one of the main uh, focus of the, uh, of the dissertation. One of the interesting things is that there's uh, two, uh, a five-year panel study where the same people were interviewed uh, in, in 2012 and also in 2017. And this, this is sort of a unique thing because it allows, uh, allows you to see them, uh, how social media practices change, how they stay the same. Also, it, it, uh, actually one of the main findings, this is sort of cut to the chase, is that <laughs> the four changes that really came out were changes in life and time management, the position that people have in their lives, the technical capabilities of the various platforms, the privacy preferences, that's a thing that's come up in that period, and the various modes of engagement. I'll come back to those in just a minute. I, 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 excuse me, I, I spent a lot of time in Norway, but uh, in, in Norwegian, this form of a dissertation has the articles and what they call the kappa, the, the summary. I don't know if that's the same practice here, but that tough, I'm going to use the Norwegian. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, the general research questions for the COPPA, I'm going to go through the COPPA and then through the four different articles uh, very, very quickly. Uh, the general research question in the COPPA is, is what is social media use and how is it meaningful as a category of activity? What kinds of skills are necessary to engage in social media activity and how do these change uh, as the practices and platforms develop? You saw that in you know, the five-year uh, panel study. And how do perceptions of social media as a type of activity change as these practices develop? <coughs> in the uh, COPPA itself, there's, there are several chapters, one on related work, theoretical perspectives, method, a summary of the findings from the four papers. But for me, I think the, 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 uh, the deepest or the, the most interesting part was perhaps the discussion. Uh, that's, I, I found, uh, you know, I, I dog-eared the pages, or no, I, I uh, put, not dog-ears, but these little post-it things, and that's where the most, most of them are. That's where my, uh, you know, I was, uh, I was fascinated with all of that. Um, there's the other thing that I really like is about photography, social photography. Photography is, uh, uh, has changed dramatically in the last five or ten years. Uh, and we see uh, the evolution of this through, uh, through this lens. Examination how people document and share portions of their lives using photographs. And it discusses the technical and skills needed in social media. How do these change over time and uh, the practices and uh, concepts that are used in this space. And there, there's actually a, an interesting discussion in the, um, uh, in the chapter on theoretical perspectives, as I recall, on uh, affordances, idioms of practice, 
uh, platform vernacular and affinity spaces, and that's going to be something that I'm going to be interested in talking to you about, uh, about the, the connections between those. Um, coming back to the broad changes, that, uh, you know, the, the broad findings uh, that at least I gleaned out of the work, is there's the thing in life situation. People had moved on in their lives five years' time. It's not a long time, but it's enough time so that things change. For example, graduation, children are born, jobs change, and so on. Um, and there's also changed, uh, changes in the way, and this changed the way that people, this changed the position of social <laughs> media in these people's lives. There are the technical capacities that had changed. Uh, you know, uh, five years is a lifetime in, uh, for many social media uh, uh, platforms. Uh, they add features, they take away features, they develop things, they uh, come and go. Uh, in many ways, you're perhaps lucky that Instagram lasted the five years, but uh, it was probably solid enough that uh, it did that. Uh, their privacy preferences, the whole issue of privacy has, has gained steam uh, during that period. Uh, in 2012, we maybe thought about it a little bit, but we hadn't had uh, Cambridge Analytica, we hadn't had Snowden, we hadn't had all of those kinds of things coming along. So the whole issue of privacy uh, changed around. And the mode of engagement with these has changed. And, and I think this is maybe one of the fascinating things, is that we check it more often, <laughs> but Martin, as engaged in it, and it has, you know, what is kind of, it's, and that's a real slippery thing of where is this in people's lives over time? In some moments, it's, it's very, very central. In other phases of life, it's, it's further out. So those are the main four big things uh, that I took out of the, the cuppa. Now going through the different papers, there's four papers uh, for, and in different phases of this work. Some of them are when both phases of the data had been collected, and some of them are when only the first wave had been uh, collected. Paper number one, talking about social media use, uh, where you're the lead author. Uh, I don't know that this has been published. I couldn't find a date on that. Uh, but it's a direct com comparison of 12 users. Originally, there were 18 in the sample, and you were 16. able to... 16. Yep. And you were able to find 12 uh, to re-interview those. Um, over these years, uh, and, and, and this, is w this is where you took the material on how they had matured and changed uh, as social media users. Uh, the paper discusses the dynamics of the orientation towards social media use, uh, and you take the, your, your conceptual foundation from Peter Vorder and his permanently online, permanently connected idea. And there, he's a German scholar at Monheim, as I recall. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, uh, someplace in Germany, uh, one of those cities in Germany. Um, and this says that communication possibilities are represented by our smartphones and the social expectations that are implicit in our use of communication. In other words, these devices have become structured into our lives. And uh, it's fascinating to discuss these sorts of things with Peter. He's a, he's a very good scholar. And this allows you to look at how people manage the, the specific uh, app that uh, the platform that you were looking at mostly was Instagram uh, about across these life phases. And here you're asking what do we mean by social media use? Logging on and off is not as relevant, but the, uh, how many of you have logged off? How many of you have turned off your phones <laughs> here? Uh, probably nobody. Uh, how many of you have turned them down? Turn them up. I want to hear them ring. I want to hear <laughs> how. I want to know how popular you are. Um, no. Okay. The second one is more directly. This is the from the first wave of of the study. Instagram at the museum. It was presented at Chi, which is what computers and human interaction, which is uh, uh, a big. This is the, uh, the perhaps the biggest HCI conference, human computer information uh, conference, uh, in the world. Um, so this is, uh, it was presented there in 2013. And this is also one of the most heavily cited papers included in the thesis. Um, the foundational study on Instagram use at the, uh, the Museum of Natural History and it, uh, how people construct narratives while visiting the museum. It draws also on the work of Richard Chalfin, uh, who I've actually met. Uh, it turns out that he was uh, Irving Goffman's research assistant when he did gender really? advertising. Ah. So he's a fascinating fellow. I was able to chat with him for uh, several times and he's, he's a, a wonderful guy to talk to. Um, and this examines the use, it, the, 
uh, sort of the findings of this um, uh, uh, paper are uh, how people choose a particular subject. And it, it seems like the blue whale, you see the photograph of the blue whale here, was a particularly common motif. But some of them were uh, interested in photographing cute animals or you know, th there, were th there was that kind of a dimension to seeking out the photographs. There was an aesthetic type of issue that people discussed, editing the photos, adjusting their qualities. Later, I, this was before the era of filters, as I, as, as I recall. Uh, in the beginnings. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, but mm. they weren't as regularized, perhaps, no, as, as, they were, uh, as they are now. And then there was also captioning, uh, where they said, okay, uh, I, you know, when they showed the picture of the whale, okay, I went out and had a big dinner last night, and this is how bloated I feel, or you know, mm. something like that. <laughs> Uh, in some cases, which was interesting because in some cases the caption existed before the photograph and people were running around the museum. They had the caption in mind, but they didn't have the photograph yet, so they were trying to match those things up. The other thing that comes out is the dynamic sharing of photos and the interaction between the person taking the photograph and captioning it and, what, and, and sending that out to their social network. Paper number three, this goes into the issue of liking. Uh, and when I grew up, like, if you went up to a girl and said, I like you, uh, that was, uh, meant one thing, but it means, now, of course, it means something completely different. It means you give a thumbs up on Facebook or, uh, it's a heart on Instagram, isn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, excuse me, I'm showing my, uh, my naivete here. <laughs> uh, but liking doesn't have the same meaning, or it has, it's gained multiple, multiple meanings. Uh, here you use Gibbs' idea of va platform vernacular. That is a set of practices associated with a platform. And it's based on the same interviews as the other papers. And there are multiple ambigu ambiguous meanings of liking. For example, it could be that you like that photograph of the whale in an aesthetic sense. It could be that you know that the person who sent that uh, is having a particular difficult time in their life and you like that as some sort of an emotional support. Uh, some sort of a reciprocal type of thing. Uh, they like your photographs and you always like their photographs. There's some sort of a web of reciprocity going on there. Uh, and also you bring up the whole negative issue, which I, I'm going to come back to, of not liking another uh, person's photograph when they expect you to. Uh, and so that could be some sort of a snub, maybe they're uh, Oh, they're busy, or maybe they don't like they don't like me anymore, or you know we're not friends anymore. Those kinds of things. Uh, so th that becomes uh, something that people interpret. The last paper is uh, same, same but different, and this is SMS Society 2019 in Toronto, uh, and that's where it's been published, as I understand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and changes in social media use over the half decade. Again, this is looking at that panel dimension of these uh, 12 people based on the re-interviewing. They found higher frequency with less, and you know, this is, you know, I've already talked about parts of this, higher frequency uh, of use with less engagement, more selectivity and sharing uh, privacy concerns. One thing that uh, actually, again, I'm, go I'm tipping you off on some questions here, mm -hmm. the cohort versus life phase effects are, are one thing that I'm interested in with that paper. So, you know, as always, there's so what? What does this mean? Why, why, should, why should you come and listen to all this stuff? The, the thing that uh, is interesting is here we have a qualitative, very much inductive analysis that really digs into some material. It examines how social media use, and in particular Instagram, has been used and how it's changing. So it gives us sort of that trajectory. Um, it looks, it's an extremely close look at a relatively s specific context uh, uh, in, in the museum. Uh, it's generally from the, and, and this is again, I'm tipping you off here, uh, the perspective of human computer interaction, HCI. There's also other approaches to this. For example, uh, computer mediated communication or CMC uh, that looks often at cognitive processes. There's interpersonal small group interaction. There's broadcast or quasi-broadcast studies that would look at your database, uh, your material in perhaps a slightly different way. There's instrumental versus expressive photography, uh, something that I'm finding very, very fascinating. And then there's the whole social consequences research. Um, so each one of these domains might look slightly differently 
at the, the, your empirical material. And I think I've got a black slide here, so that must mean I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay? Okay. So, now, I understand now I get to ask you questions. Yeah. Now we get to talk. Yeah. Okay, I don't have to just <laughs> sit here, and it's, it, uh, it's up to you to, uh, okay. Um, yeah, and I've got eight pages in case you want to count. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, this is almost a methods question, but generally you've used an inductive approach. And a lot of times people um, use inductive analysis paired with some sort of thought that it's going to become deductive. Mm -hmm. uh, and to help, uh, and, and they use that grounded material in order to come up with propositions or something like that uh, that could be tested on a more generalizable basis. What are your propositions? <laughs> <laughs> on how to test this? No, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Given, given your findings, give me a, 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 a proposition that might be empirically tested or um, two. Yeah, okay. Um, for instance, I've been thinking about following certain likes, uh, as in, in um, doing a similar study of, of likes that has been handed out, for instance. So people uh, like pictures, and then I would like to um, go back to that certain like, for instance, and okay. try to perhaps categorize different likes and see if they are uh, in line with my findings. But I'm thinking more in a causal sense. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm not really sure I understand. Inductive material says, okay, I look at what's going on there and I describe and I categorize. Yeah. But deductive says, okay, it seems like when this happens, this is going on. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you've got some categories, you've got some material mm -hmm. that is, is, has that potential. You've, you've categorized things and you've sorted things out. Mm -hmm. But then m pushing that further, to generalize that in, for example, a questionnaire, mm -hmm. you would need to have more causal propositions mm -hmm. that X causes Y, mm -hmm. if I'm being sort of a, 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 a deductive nerd. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so being an inductive nerd, then, I I'm, haven't I'm really... One of those I'm actually yeah. <laughs> one of those two. So. <laughs> yeah, I um. haven't really... I mean, I haven't really thought like that because mm. I've, I've, I've followed, I've been out in the field, I've followed people, I've followed users, and yeah. uh, following... No. the data. You yeah, know. but this is a PhD exam. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I know that you know your stuff. Yeah. But also it's... It's, it's brighter. In brighter yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, okay. Um, well, I don't have a... Uh, this is a good start, isn't no. it? <laughs> 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 I don't really have a, a, a good question or a good answer to that. I okay. mean, um, it's, it's just been uh, being interested in not generalizing, but being no. interested in, in deep and rich descriptions, you know? No. No. Um, and then, then, of course, if this were to be combined with larger sets of data, for instance, that mm. could, I mean, they could uh, cross, uh, they can... But okay, I, I come to you and I say, okay, I've, I just got a gazillion uh, kroner to uh, do a survey yeah. of Instagram use. Based, based on your material, mm -hmm. What would you suggest the you know propositions that we could build questionnaire questions around in that questionnaire? Mm -hmm. Well, then um, I've been thinking a bit about how difficult it has been to say really anything generalizable about these twelve. No, oh. you know, oh. uh, so the looking at these twelve or these sixteen people, the, the the, the answers have been very varied. Yeah. Uh, so this has been something I've been struggling with. Yeah. Uh, so honestly, I wouldn't know. I guess I would ask similar questions that I've asked within the interviews. Mm. And then um, if I speculate, I guess that the, 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 the questions would be as varied yeah. or the answers would be as varied. Mm. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm going to come back to that. Actually. Okay. Great. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking forward to that? Yeah. I am too. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
I'm going to move on to the first research question. And you say, what is social media use and how is it meaningful category or meaningful activity? And when I read that, that seems quite broad. Uh, it is it possible, it, it's possible to suggest that it doesn't have a lot of analytical utility. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a very broad net and mm -hmm. you're bound to catch something. Mm -hmm. uh, how could you sharpen that research question? Uh, how, would you, how would you go about tightening that? I would say something like uh, which social practices constitutes social media use. Okay, social practices, that's good. There's mm -hmm. a good concept. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you mean by that? I mean um, people engaging in activities mm, together or in relation to others. Okay, so interpersonal interactivity. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, th yeah, but I, you know, I think that, that that sort of thing was, uh, when I read that, I thought that uh, uh, that would be a, a good way to go. Yeah. Uh, now I'm going to move on to related work, and I'm going to c come to Goffman, St. Irving. Um, and he talks about we need to calibrate activities such that we facilitate a continuation of the situation. He was working largely in a face-to-face world. One time I did a, sur a study of all this stuff to look at how many times he mentions the telephone, and it's not very many, actually. Mm. I can tell you the page numbers later. Mm. Um, <laughs> but he says that ritual, ritual interaction is the glue, uh, like Durkheim, he says that ritual interaction is the glue that holds society together. Um, so users adopt practices to, for example, assemble a posting. And it can sometimes go wrong. Sending a po and, and this is where I, I draw on, on Randall Collins, because he talks about failed rituals. Of I send you a photograph that is intended to enrich the interaction between us, but my intention and your interpretation um, go opposite directions. Mm -hmm. Did you come across any n examples in your discussions about this type of a dynamic? Um, yeah, well, in the first data set, especially, I would say, um, and especially in terms of, of uh, likes and reactions uh, to, uh, to mm. certain postings. Uh, for instance, there was one girl uh, who mentioned that she, she posted a picture where she had a, a certain friend in mind uh, and when he didn't react to this, uh, she decided that she was going to choose an another channel and just send the picture to him. Oh. Because she was so convinced that if he had seen it, he would be uh, as excited as she was. Okay, so it, it was failed in the sense that he didn't react. Okay, that comes back to that fi finding about uh, not people not commenting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You didn't run across any situations where people sent the wrong picture or um, somehow insulted people by sending a picture? Um, not explicitly, but the example of, of uh, there's one guy explaining that how he, he doesn't post pictures of uh, mutual friends mm. anymore. Mm. He just sends them directly oh. because he had realized that is this fun really? No, not to all the other 400 followers, for instance. Mm. So that could be some kind of adjustment coming from Okay. Uh, a reaction to that, okay. I guess. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting because that, that would be more of a specific interaction instead mm -hmm. of the quasi-broadcast mm -hmm. kind of thing that uh, we've been setting up. Um, another thing uh, in, in, in Chapter 3 is there's a discussion of media skills and learning how to use uh, media and media devices uh, and bringing to bear certain resources. Uh, and in this, there's a focus on the manipulation of the device, its settings, uh, those kinds of things. Examination, how being able to read the social context. But, and I, I suppose that's my question is, if I, I'm really good at doing Instagram, I know how to use my phone and so on, but I also, is there the same kind of s skills in reading the public or reading the people who will be seeing this? Did you, were you able to pick up on any of that? Mm, yeah, I guess it's related to the expectations that people have of their audience. Uh, mm. Most of them develop these skills in knowing 
who were going to respond, who were going to like, uh, and what kind of pictures will re receive a mm. certain kind of reactions. So I would definitely say that's some sort of social skill that, or so social media skill that people develop. Was this developed? Did, was mm. there a trajectory in that? Mm. Let me think of an example if they talked more about this in 2017. Um, yeah, well, in a sense that people are more, uh, s they were describing being more selective with postings mm. in 2017. Okay. Um, and sort of saving up and just posting mm, the most in interesting stuff. Uh, one girl mentioned that in, in the interview in 2017, uh, she talked about how she previously, in the beginning of using Instagram, she uh, could post a picture of a, of a banana peel or just anything really, just mm. to post. And now she was much more selective because she knew that a certain kind of content would generate a certain kind of feedback. Uh, so being more selective, not wanting to, to spam. Uh, but if we go back to my question on, on propositions that you would test, is mm -hmm. there some sort of a cognitive ma uh, maturation or there's some sort of an embarrassment was there something going on in the interim that schooled her in that do you think yeah well not receiving the expected amount of likes for instance okay and then uh, either just reflecting upon it and saying okay so this one i thought this would get more likes but it mm. didn't so i'm just gonna leave it there and it's gonna be embarrassing mm. uh, or even uh, removing pictures that didn't receive enough did anybody feedback. talk about getting direct Negative feedback? Negative, like ne negative yeah, comments? Why did, you, why did you do that banana mm, peel thing? Uh, uh, no, they didn't. didn't. So yeah, well, 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 there was one example of in the uh, last paper about mm. using frames, Okay. Uh, for instance, ah. that a guy in 2017 explained that in 2012 he used uh, frames on all Instagrams. And we talked about that in the, in the interview in 2012, and I showed him this quick clip in 2017. And then he said, oh, I used frames on Instagrams a lot, all, mm. all the time. Uh, and I thought that was the thing. Um, and then he talked about his brother being critical, uh, not on Instagram uh, necessarily, but at family gatherings and saying that you, you have to stop doing that. That's, okay. that's not the way, the way to go. Okay. Uh, and so he, he uh, decided to stop using that because that was apparently okay, lame. So some sort of a stylistic uh, development based yeah. on, on that type of an interaction. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go over to photography a little bit now. Mm? Uh, and what is, what is social photography? Uh, you, you draw on child from there, but what mm. is social photography? Um, taking and sharing and editing pictures oh. with others. With others? Uh, yeah, in some way. Okay, I go to the museum on a solo trip and I take a picture of the whale. Yeah. And I mess around with it a little bit, put a caption on and send it out. That's social photography. Uh, where do you send it out? Uh, Instagram, Facebook. Yeah. No. Then I'd say it's social s photography. Okay. What's not social photography then? Uh, taking the same picture and keeping it on your phone and never showing it to anyone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess, or just uh, uh, never receiving any kind of uh, feedback on it. P posting it but not getting feedback, or nobody. Uh, no, not showing it to anyone. Okay. I'd say. Yeah. No. Is there some sort of a gray zone there where you'll show it to some people, not other people? Um, yeah. I guess it goes back to, I mean, Schaufen talks about showing these um, uh, dia bilder. Mm. Slides, yeah. yeah. And, and showing slideshows. Mm. Uh, so that was social in one sense. Uh, oh. uh, yeah. Sexting. Is that social photography? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. No. no, it depends on you know the circle. Yeah. Depends on the circle. I guess it depends on on, on 
yeah, as, as I rely upon uh, Schaffen's definition, that's uh, taking in editing and sharing with others, I think. Yeah, that would hopefully be a very tight social circle. Yeah, but yeah. yeah okay. But of course, that's different today. I mean, when he wrote this in 87, yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. there were... It was Kodachrome, and yeah. Yeah, and it wasn't uh, possible to share with the same amount of, of people as today, of course. So yeah. Are, are we... Something's... No? Yeah. 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 <coughs> Hello, can you hear me? Uh -huh. Oh, we have to have this thing. We have to have the light on. Oh. <laughs> okay. We we can't exchange information now. No. <laughs> Strange. Do you have a phone with you? Maybe we could. Yeah, we can text. <laughs> text. <laughs> okay. No, I think it's. I can. Are we on now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Everything's all set. Okay. But then, one of, in my mind, there's starting to be a distinction, and this is one thing that's coming, uh, more recently, is between instrumental and expressive photography. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had a master's student who wrote about photographs of in, in Singapore of mothers with their infant child, children. And you know, when I say that theme, everybody thinks of the mother and the, sort of the fuzzy focus photographs and uh, you know, here's my baby and isn't she beautiful and all that sort of stuff. But there's a real instrumental side too, that the child gets a rash and they take a photograph of it to uh, show to the doctor. In the, in the most extreme case, uh, they took photographs of the dirty diapers to say, you know, is this the correct, is this the way it should look? Oh, yeah. uh, and, and actually you can go online and see them. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but, that, you know, in my mind, that's a very instrumental type of thing. Mm -hmm. Is that social photography? Mm, yeah. Based on that, uh, uh, on that definition, I mean, it is taking and, mm -hmm. and sharing a photograph. Uh, but it's not the, uh, that's more of a, a transfer of a picture. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but, but I guess I there could be a scope. But one of the things I'm hearing you say with the, the sort of the mother holding her baby and sort of the fuzzy focus and all that, is that there's sort of maybe a, a different type of engagement or a different type of emotional bond that's being played on. It might be humorous, it might be sympathy, it might be, uh, you know, intimacy, it, you know, a whole range of things with, mm -hmm. with the instrumental. I, you know, I take photographs when I take a, a fuse box apart because I want to remember mm -hmm. the green wire goes here and, and uh, which for me would be outside of that. Mm -hmm. Where, do, you know, and, and so I'm thinking that there's some sort of a spectrum here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well that would be interesting to to look at, uh, mm. I mean, for for instance, those kind of uh, instructional threads or uh, videos on on uh, YouTube, for instance, where there is more of a a motif no. uh, or more of a, a reason for posting. Mm. Um, in one in one paper, um, I mentioned uh, one of the participants talking about visiting or going to Instagram just to get, have a good time. Oh. Uh, so, so I guess that's the fussy infant baby good, yeah. stuff. <laughs> Feeling, feel good. Yeah, yeah. Feel yeah. Good. Uh, oh. And sort of having a coffee and, and looking at Instagram. Mm. Uh, so that's sort of this consuming social life okay. yeah. thing. Which is different from maybe the, uh, the rash or the dirty diaper or the fuse box. Yeah, or no. even... Uh, um, yeah, I mean, consuming news and entertainment, and we have all mm. those okay. uh, different aspects of social media as well. Okay. What's a modal affordance? I didn't get that. A mobile. N a modal. Modal yeah. affordance. Um, what, is, what is a mobile affordance? Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I thought, did I write that? Uh, modal affordances are um, <laughs> different features that um, or different ways of expressing. Uh, a modal affordance can be uh, being able to express yourself through text or photo or video. Uh, mm -hmm. So sort of the different modes oh, that a okay. phone yeah. or a, a, yeah. Yeah, I, a I, device. I, I had a hard time picking that out. And okay. Perhaps that okay. might be mm -hmm. a... Um, my next question is, how would you transfer the findings of your analysis of a museum to another social context? For example, a restaurant business, a birthday party, a soccer match, a PhD exam. Um, and it, 
it, it, this is going to relate to the methods chapter since it focuses on and constrains your work, but also raises the questions of generalizability. So if I said, okay, uh, okay, all of you who have taken a photograph out here today in this, you know, let's, let's see those and let's, you know, how would your findings um, be applicable to mm. that? Mm. Um, well, that's a good question. I mean, I have looked at this very specific domain mm. uh, and I, I talk about s social media use within this domain. Mm. Um, I am planning on, on, on continue this work, uh, looking at other user groups in other environments. In other contexts, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, what, which ones? We're looking at, we're working with the digital seniors now, for okay. instance. Uh, so sort of to, to compare this very hev heavy use to a, a, another kind of use and where uh, you might want to continue using uh, social mm. media and, and technology, but you have these cognitive and physical restraints. Okay. Perhaps it yeah. might not be possible the same way. Okay. Um, so that could be an idea. Um, other cultural institutions, such as a, a concert, could be interesting. Um, and of course, I mean, uh, sitting at cafes we've mm. talked about uh, mm. and doing similar ob ob observations. And yeah. Those all seem to be, you know, going back to childhood, those all seem to be sort of, in many respects, happy uh, mm. or uh, socially positive uh, contexts. Mm. Uh, is there uh, application to just other uh, not so uh, typical mm -hmm. happy contexts? Mm. I mean, Gibbs looks at funerals, for mm -hmm. instance, uh, which is very interesting. Is it okay to post a selfie on a funeral? Oh. Uh, mm. um, so that's an interesting context. Um, I would say, in general, uh, the people in my studies have been very uh, uh, open, easy to talk to, and uh, we've talked about, you know, pretty uh, fun stuff. Uh, and I guess that is also related to the method. Then, I mean, if I want to people to talk about difficult things uh, or or heavy or sad contexts, mm -hmm. for instance, I mean, that would require me to find a certain group who would. Uh, want me to or who would want to talk about this stuff exactly. as well mm -hmm. um, but I mean I have colleagues who work with with the cancer patients for instance okay. uh, and trying to oh, documenting uh, yeah how, how they um, uh, 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 how they um, recover from from uh, cancer oh, okay so mm. not okay not uh, palliative care but uh, no oh okay. yeah on okay. the okay. other okay. way around no, hopefully okay. so to say Okay. Um, one thing that I, just a comment, I think chapter three was, for me, it, it was a little bit jumpy, but uh, I, I, I had a hard time of picking out the, the arc of that. But uh, okay. I'll, that's, I was going to ask you a question on that, but I'm, I'll just make that as a comment. Uh, okay. Okay. I, I won't charge you extra for that. Um, <laughs> and I'll move on to uh, chapter four. And this, and I've had huge discussions with Joe Walter about this. What is a theory? Uh, and you can include Thomas Kuhn if you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That made it easier. <laughs> uh, a theory is... Uh, uh, is it one thing? No. Good. Okay, okay. next question. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah, well. Uh, is a theory the same for a physicist as it is for an economist? I guess there would be a concept that would suggest that it, that it is. Um, I guess. Uh, it, I would say that it's uh, some sort of empirical work leading up to uh, conclusions that are applicable in other um, uh, okay. areas or other uh, okay. studies. Because in physics, a theory, uh, well, Boyle's law, when you mm. increase the temperature, the pressure, you know, and there's a direct uh, correlation. Uh, 
the, the economists are a little bit arrogant about this, but they call it the law of supply and demand. It's not mm -hmm. a law. Mm -hmm. But you know, generally when the supply of stuff goes up, the, it goes down. There's a proposition. There's mm -hmm. when this happens, that happens. Uh, it's usually okay, you know, and, and the economic, the supply and demand thing is, you know, it's okay, but it's not as good. In the social sciences, uh, in, for example, sociology or uh, more qualitative work, we run around calling things theories. Mm -hmm. But are those more frameworks or uh, sensitizing concepts? Yeah. Uh, and, and how does that relate to uh, uh, Boyle's Law, for example? Mm -hmm. um. this, this is, you know, again, this is a PhD exam. I need to, you know, part of this is, you know, you know your stuff about the uh, people taking pictures of the whale, but in the broader context of being a, a, a PhD, you know, these are the types of questions. Mm -hmm. hmm. um, yeah, okay, so I, I think I, I, uh, I use the, uh, I think I call the chapter theoretical frameworks, yeah. don't I? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is the way to uh, perspectives. Yeah. Perspectives, okay, yeah. Mm. So frameworks and perspectives has been on the table, so to speak. Um, so I would say that I I have moved from calling it a theory chapter to to saying that this is some sort of, of framework for explaining what mm. I want to explain here, no. and being uh, inductive work as well. I mean, this is, uh, that's the approach. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I, th this is something that I have to deal with all the time too, yeah. since I do do inductive sorts of things. Mm. But it gets thrown in your face, and being mm -hmm. able to sort of sort that out, I think, is one of the issues. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Seeing things as a framework and not, for example, uh, domestication. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, well, I, I mean, I, I think it comes from, I think that you can look at this from different perspectives. You can mm. uh, you can describe this in different ways. Okay. And this is the way I have chosen to describe this right. from these perspectives. Exactly. Oh, okay. um, the next, I'm moving on. Uh, you talk about affordan uh, uh, affordances that in enable social practices. In other words, there's <laughs> something about the machine or something about the the platform or something about the way that it's put together that enables social practices. That fits into that whole discussion of, of, of uh, social constructionist versus technological determinism. And, it's, and you're making a technical determinist, determinist statement there, mm -hmm. that the people at Instagram have changed the way that the framing is done or to put on a button mm -hmm. or something like that, and that results in social practices. Mm -hmm. Help me play yeah. around with that idea a little bit. But I also say that people create these own, their, their own meanings and their own practices, and uh, wouldn't that be the other way around then, too? Uh -huh. uh, so... But, but the, some, some nerd in Instagram says, okay, but if we put this, if we make this functionality different here, mm. And the people kind of get that and, and turn it into something, you know, and, and start using that mm. in the way that he intends. Mm. And uh, they uh, start making meaning out of that in a social sense. Mm. For me, that's the technology mm. pushing the, uh, the social practices. Yeah, and but I'm I guess there are also, it's also the other way around. Okay. It's this interplay. Yeah. Uh, for instance, now... Um, uh, Facebook talking about hiding likes mm. uh, and so they say that it's because people are feeling bad not seeing their likes and stuff uh, but I would guess that uh, that wouldn't be the main reason for doing it probably because they are a company they want to make money so yeah, exactly. um, but if they notice a practice and they notice um, people using these affordances or using these features a certain way. Mm. Uh, I mean, they listen to the users as well uh, mm. for some reason and change the technology as well. So I guess that the practices also affects yeah. the technology. Yeah, it seems like, you know, and, and you know, I'm sorry for bringing this up, but this is one of those horrible circular discussions mm -hmm. that, and I, I don't think ever anybody's going to get, it's going to go one way or the other, but it's, mm. it's one of the, it's, it's just part of the situation, part mm. of the, the world uh, that we live in. Uh, 
But then coming back to that, how flexible are affordances? If the guy at Instagram says, okay, well, I'm going to make this functionality in this particular way, mm -hmm. and people start pushing it in other directions, how flexible are these affordances? Mm -hmm. I guess it depends on whether you listen to Norman or Gibson then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Gibson yeah, exactly. would say that uh, it is what it is. It can be used. These features can be used for different purposes. Yeah. I could uh, use this glass as a pillow. Yeah. But that's not that's exactly not. the way. Uh, it wouldn't be a very comfortable one. But, uh, no, but it is probably possible. Oh. Uh, and I mean, Norman talks about, especially then in a technology context of uh, what is we sometimes might think that we see the affordances, yeah. but we probably don't. We, we get these perceived affordances. We, mm. we get the feedback, the screen feedback. Mm, mm. And so the real affordances are probably below, right? Okay. Um, oh, good. Oh. Mm. <gasps> okay. Um, now I'm going to talk a little bit about platform. Yeah. Uh, your notion of a platform doesn't include the notion of a platform operator in sort of the commercial sense. And here I'm thinking, for example, Grab, Uber, those sorts of things. Grab, excuse me, that's a Asian version of Uber. Okay. Uh, which, okay, that was just in my mind. Uh, you use Tawana's definition uh, as uh, a software-based product or service which outside parties can build and complement uh, 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 complement uh, their production. It's a commercial, and I'm reading a very commercial sense of mm. a platform there. Mm. Is Instagram a platform then? Yeah, well, I think that I'm trying to describe these kind of kinds of platforms, these social media platforms, as not being like Tiwana describes them. He oh. describes them from a very technological okay. uh, perspective. Uh. So, um, um, I think reading uh, internet or um, information science literature, the, the user perspective is, is often missing. Mm. And, and I mean, uh, social media consists of users. And if we leave those out, then we get the, the infrastructure, we get the, the, te technical, um, the technical platform. Mm. Uh, but uh, what I'm trying to describe is, is what go what, what's going on on the platforms. So, I mean, it is the interaction, it is the culture, it is the platform vernacular and the idioms of practices and mm. uh, the communities that they create. Now, one of the things that I'm thinking of more and more lately, and it came out in the discussion that, we, that I uh, my talk the other day, mm. was that quite often the platform is standing between two actors. Mm. I want to ride Uber... Um, mediates that to a, a population of people who can give me a ride, mm. you know, th those sorts of things. Instagram, can you use that structure for Instagram, of Instagram somehow being between me and what? Mm. It's mm. not, in, in the case of Uber, I pay mm. through Uber and they take a cut and mm. I get my taxi ride. Mm. Uh, Tinder is another platform where yeah. uh, a guy looking for a date uh, and it goes through Tinder and mm. I think that's advertising is mm. the thing that they make money off of. What's going on in Instagram if that's a platform? Mm. I mean, influencers are, of course, important actors. I mean, I Yeah, but me at the museum. Um, yeah. Yeah, so okay, in that context... Uh, it wouldn't be a business platform, and it wasn't. It wasn't really when, when in 2012, mm. uh, it was possible to advertise. It was uh, a chronological feed as well. Okay. So it wasn't, and as I think I, I write somewhere that this movement from being uh, applications, and you mentioned it in the beginning as well, mm. this movement from applications to platforms, yeah. uh, and and to some, uh, Instagram is still probably just, just a photo editing app, uh, but depending also on the purposes and on the networks and what kind of interaction you have. And if you, uh, mm, yeah, in what, what the way you use it 
would differ, but but uh, not in that sense, uh, not as Uber or as Tinder. There's no third party, really. What, what do you gaming. mean by th a third party? Or it, it's not. Um, um, mm, mm. Or I mean that there is a, a difference. How. Mm. Yeah, it's complicated. I mean, it's complicated because it's it's owned by Facebook as well. So to some people, Instagram would be just a, a sub uh, sub application of Facebook, mm. and then Facebook would be the uh, the big platform. Mm. And and if we talk about the Instagram that way, I mean, then it it would be Facebook being the the platform, platform and that would make more sense no. i think but in in addition when you know i was sort of on a two-sided thing mm -hmm. tinder is an example somebody wants to meet uh, a date and they mm -hmm. go through this platform because there, there's sort of a critical mass of users on both sides mm. the same thing with uber there's a critical mass of taxis and people who want rides they go through this you know this matching uh, process instagram if i were to think about it i would think that i want to connect with my social sphere and here's a way of doing that. And it could, there's Instagram, and there's probably 50 other photo sharing apps, but Instagram happens to have a critical mass on both mm -hmm. sides. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's not really two sides in the sense because it's me and my friends, and it's, it's very, it's not like Uber where the money's going one way, but it's going back and mm -hmm. forth. But then in addition with Instagram, there would be another actor there, which would be the advertisers. Mm -hmm. Uh, who are interested in, in putting images in front of my eyes uh, in various ways. Mm -hmm. So that, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I also think it's, um, um, I mean, with Uber, you have a certain uh, goal. You need to get a car and you need to go somewhere. Yeah. When you use Tinder, you will probably want to meet a match mm -hmm. then. Uh, coming to social media or coming to Instagram, you probably have your relationships already and you bring them to Instagram, or that's the main... Um, but wouldn't it be some sort of a maintenance of that group, or some sort of a refreshing of, you know, yeah. I'm having a cool time at the museum, look at me. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, it could be, but it's, uh, I mean, in terms of, of um, um, the reasons for going to Instagram, it's probably mm. maintaining them, maintaining your relationships. Mm. Uh, it's not... Uh, uh, searching for a specific for product no, or okay. searching for a specific, a specific service right, the yeah. same way. Oh, yeah, there's uh, differences mm. there. Yeah, okay. um, my next question is, in uh, uh, this is chapter three now, um, you have the ideas of idioms of practice, platform vernacular, communities, uh, communities of practice, and affordances. Mm. I was a little bit confused by all of those. Okay. Can you sort them out for me? Yeah. Okay, good. Mm. I'm, I'm all okay. ears. <laughs> so uh, people have and form communities of practice within Instagram. Okay. Uh, we could say that their networks or uh, clusters within their networks are these communities of practice where they rely upon affordances uh, when interacting and, and using uh, Instagram, for okay. instance. Um, and so when they do this, they develop a certain platform vernacular, uh, which is sometimes specific uh, for the platform. There's this Instagram language, and it, it's not necessarily the same on Twitter, okay. but it also could be to make it more complicated. Um, <laughs> and then as they do this, as they interact, they also develop uh, idioms of practice. Okay. So they uh, interact and they correct each other and they uh, learn the way to sort of the right way to interact there okay. and how to behave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that th there's a, um, an actual system or a system to all of this. Yeah, it seems like it. Okay, yeah. okay good. Yeah. Now I'm going to move to the chapter on methods. I'm on page four now. Yeah, okay. Oh. <laughs> it's a halfway <laughs> then. Isn't, isn't yeah. that good? Yeah. Just so anybody who's counting. Yeah. Uh, your data comes from 16 people, and you follow up on 12. There were 222 photos. Um, 123 were natural, and 99 were more directed. 
There were 16 people in the first sample with a mean age of 27 and a standard deviation of 4, have I figured out. Uh, and basically, the same sample was shifted five years uh, in for the, the second sample uh, with the same de standard deviation. And especially in time one, this is a sample of young adults. It's not teens, uh, nor is it more mature people. There, there's one person who I might, with justification, call a little bit grayer. Uh, Twelve people is a small sample. Is this enough to generalize from? Um, is this enough to base a PhD on? Yeah, it is. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but I mean, um, in, in the first data set, uh, these interviews were combined with their pictures as well. Mm. So they were 16 in the beginning. No. Uh, and there were also pictures from uh, other people. So they were all the pictures yeah, taken, scraped, yeah. At, yeah, yeah, yeah. taken at uh, mm. that location at that time. Mm. So that was just a way to sort of get some kind of categories uh, from that. And then following up uh, by, well, this sort of unique way of, of uh, showing them snippets from the interviews before. Uh, that, mm. that also added another dimension to this data. So yes, they are few, but they are the descriptions are very rich, and mm -hmm. um, okay. we gain, you know, this detailed level. Mm. Yeah. Um, so you f you feel it's justifiable with a, such a small sample? Uh, yeah, for this study, I think so. Okay. Mm -hmm. The next question is, uh, and this is this is me. This is just one of my ticks. What is an in-depth interview? Is it a recognized technique, like a focus group or re regression analysis, or is it a phrase that we just throw around, qualitative researchers, mm -hmm. to, to sort of piff up our, uh, our writing and mm -hmm. convince them? And uh, you, you note that you used in-depth interviews in the paper on liking to get the lived experience. Um, but how is this? Uh, if it's a technique, what are the elements? What isolate out the elements that, mm -hmm. if you were to teach a class on in-depth interviewing, you would teach the students? Uh, and what is what's its academic legacy? How is it different, for example, from journalistic interviewing or psychiatric interviewing or a good chat mm -hmm. with a friend? Mm -hmm. Help me help me understand this. Yeah. Okay. So put my mind to rest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, first of all. Uh, it is um, systematic. There was an interview guide. Okay, uh, good. Yeah. Similar questions asked to uh, each and every one of them. Uh, and then, especially in terms of, of uh, analyzing the data, uh, that's... But not, that's analysis, that's not interviewing. Yeah. You talk about in-depth yeah. interviewing. Yeah, okay, mm. so um, the semi-structured uh, interview guides okay. will be an important aspect. Um, sort of knowing my role within this and reflecting upon this mm. um, and being aware that this is a context. I mean, I have an effect on the interview, of course, and how to, to uh, uh, relate to that. Mm. Mm. What else? Um, well, deciding upon uh, videotaping, for instance, um, mm. to be able to go back and listen to what exactly did they say. Okay, uh, the pauses and... Yeah, pauses, pauses and also they had their devices with them. Oh. Uh, so in the beginning I had this idea of, of uh, uh, well, perhaps looking at uh, whether they, or how they would relate to the phone within the interviews. Mm. Um, so, I mean, it is, it's structured and it's uh, systematic in a way that a journalist interview wouldn't be, for instance. Yeah. But then, at the same time, there was the opportunity to follow threads that came up, spontaneous threads, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, was that done very much? Um, yeah, it was. Uh, I think there were 12 questions mm. in the interview guide that were asked at each uh, interview. 
And then, of course, I had them uh, or let them uh, continue their reasonings as well. Okay. Mm? Yeah. okay. Um, then my next question has to do with, uh, okay, you've got these 12 people with a five-year separation. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems like it'd be a good chance to separate out the cohort and life phase effects. Mm -hmm. uh, can you do that? Could you uh, explain a bit more how you mean? A cohort effect is people born in a certain period carry with them, post-war mm. children mm. carry with them certain types of things that um, through their lives, mm. or you know, depression children mm. uh, about being thrifty or something like that. Mm. Mm. Uh, but then for everybody going through adolescence, there's uh, you know, certain other types of behaviors mm. that you might expect. So one thing is the things that people carry with them, that bear with them over time, and the other one are things that they do based on their uh, temple situation, or their, their yeah, life okay. phase situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you separate out things like that? Th you seem like, you know, this data, when you look at it, mm -hmm. wow, five years difference. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that was, that was again very complex, uh, because, I mean, it's also, a question of me asking people mm. uh, and themselves describing this. I mean, mm. it would of course be difficult for them to say, I'm a product of my culture. Uh, <laughs> but, but then, you know, this would come out of the analysis, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And in time one, they were a teen or a late teen and doing this, and then five mm. years later, there was something doing that. Mm. But as they were pointing towards these certain uh, events in life, that made it clear and how they were reasoning, for instance, saying that I used to live by myself, now I live with someone, so mm. I cannot use my phone as much. Mm. Uh, but at the same time describing that, um, well one, one girl was talking about, I, have, I like social media the same way as before, I just don't have the time, for mm. instance. Mm. And the other girl or the other woman who had two kids, and she herself described that uh, it wasn't me asking how has uh, or w which events in your life has changed uh, mm. your use of social media. It mm. was just um, asking him her to to talk about how she uses social media today, and then herself, mm. she herself explained that I have two kids today, so it's so those would be life phase changes. Yeah. Uh, and and you, you discussed that to a certain degree in your findings, mm. that people were more worried about mm. trust or uh, they, it had a different position. Mm. But what would be the, uh, the, thing that, the things that they carry with them, mm. Uh, mm. which would be the, uh, 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 the cohort effects? Mm. Well, I, I haven't really, I mean, as you have seen, I haven't uh, thought mm. about that. Mm. Um, and I guess there would be a different kind of analysis, um, and I would need <coughs> uh, different uh, frameworks and different uh, perspectives to okay. discuss that. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Now this is you know there's uh, I've gotten the instruction and they say at the very end you're supposed to ask you know what so what, what? Mm -hmm. but this is this isn't that question but this is a version of that question of the so what question. You studied use of Instagram in a particular setting. How, on, if you're looking at a social-wide perspective, how consequential is the use of Instagram? How has it changed society? Mm. What would we lose <coughs> if Instagram went away? What about the broader issue of, what if mobile photography went away? Mm. Um, it's just sort of a, a fun fact. I think we've taken about 10 trillion photos um, since 1826 when the first photograph was taken. Uh, and half of those in the last five years. Mm. Uh, so, so, you know, it, it ha I'm, I'm, I'm helping you with that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, what would happen if, how has Instagram changed society? Mm. Mm. Well, I would say that the main the main impact uh, that Instagram has had is the as this relationship facilitator. Uh, okay. So maintaining social life. Okay. Um, so our, our, our social interaction would be more impoverished without Instagram? Um, well, I mean, we have managed before Instagram. Mm. Uh, 
so uh, I'm sure we would manage without Instagram, but I, I guess that we have, we have, as I write about, we have these expectations now. We have the expectations of social media or technology, um, and we've sort of learned to live with this technology. Um, okay. And I mean, mm. listening at, listening to conversations on the bus or wherever mm. you you hear Instagram popping up and you hear people talking about Instagram, even when. Uh, not using Instagram or not even talking about specific content, but just okay. talking about it as a uh, as a player okay. in our life. But if I, you know, if I was this hypothetical god that said, "Okay, no more Instagram," mm. would that be a structure, a major structural change in society? If uh, yeah, well, if I if I'm for, uh, and maybe for what group in society? Mm. No, but I mean. There are new platforms, as you mentioned in the beginning. Mm. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm lucky that Instagram is still around. Mm. Uh, and, and some of the participants also describe moving between different platforms. Mm. So I guess this is something that we are doing today. And if Instagram would be uh, off the market, I guess uh, this is a way that we live our lives now. Okay. And I think we w would find another platform. Okay. To do that. Yeah. But now I'm going to be even more of a harsh god. I'm going to take away mobile photography mm. or digital photography. How is that, that going? That sounds boring. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so but you're a god. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but no, uh, how, how, is, uh, how would that change society? How would that change society? Or how, you know, if you go back, mm. no. Mm. But I mean, if we go back again then to Schaffen's work in 87, mm. these practices were already there no. uh, but to the degree not to the degree of course not when today we have our phones and we have internet connection and we have the possibility no. to a greater extent of course than before no. um, but that could be an interesting study to remove people's phones for a couple of yeah people do that every once in a while there's yeah now. Uh, okay okay um, yeah so it has changed but I mean it would be interesting to see uh, how just to uh, by removing phones. I mean, th I guess that's the way we we would be able to know. Well, I, I read a news paper. I think it was in the '60s or something like that. That a wedding in in England, and uh, they did the wedding and all of that and got married. Uh, but the photographer had all the film and all his cameras stolen, mm. uh, and they restaged the wedding. Mm. Uh, yeah. Would they, were they married or not? Mm. <laughs> yeah, and, and people do that. I mean, um, uh, I saw, for instance, a, a girl getting engaged, uh, but she had she didn't have her nails done, so she asked her best friend to uh, put her hand up instead and put the ring on, uh, so, so that who she was would, he engaged too. Yeah, then? so that she would be able to show okay, that yeah. okay. uh, ring on Instagram. Yeah. Mm? Okay. So th there, there's some funny expectations. I don't know that at the end of the day, the w you know major things would change, but there would be mm. some expectations or some re mm. readjustments, mm. I suppose. Okay. Um, another broad question, though. Uh, it's possible to think about social media use on several levels, and you uh, largely uh, use one of these. One is the sort of internal processes, the cognitive activities, moral evaluations. This is a, uh, a CMC computer-mediated computer communication type of approach generally. Uh, a second uh, is the individual behavior, which I would categorize quite, a, not exclusively, but very often this is kind of the HCI, human-computer interaction type of thing. Uh, there's the sort of small-scale social network uh, use of technology, and then there's the broader social institutions like we've been playing around with now. In some ways, I read your dissertation speaking to the, to the the HCI, the human computer interaction, and which is to be expected. Uh, your, your advisor is, is very well known in that area. But there's almost no discussion. There's a, a couple of places where you talk about emotions, uh, of, uh, cognitive processes. There's a little bit of discussion about social interactions within the small group, uh, and not really a whole lot on the broader social institutions with social uh, consequences. Um, uh, and, and, you know, uh, the fact that the paper's been presented at CHI 
is, is uh, uh, part of this. So help me, walk me through the cognitive processes, small, scale, small group interactions, and social consequences. Uh, using your material. But I would need three more PhDs oh. for that, <laughs> <laughs> I think. No, but, but again, this is going back to just being an agile academic, mm. to being able to put yourself into the position of what the, the psychologists mm. think about this, mm. what the, uh, what the uh, economists think about it or something, mm. you know, those mm. sorts of things. Mm. So what, are the, what do you think the cognitive uh, mm. effects of... Instagram use are? Hmm. Are they ruining our ability to concentrate? Are they... Uh but I mean, there are these kind of studies uh, hmm. within psychology, for instance. There's a lot of these tracing personality traits uh, towards certain kind of behaviors, okay. for instance. Um, and, and trying to explain different kinds of I mean, using Instagram, would that make you more narcissistic, for instance? Oh. And I think that, I mean, of course, I've chosen a, a limited amount of people, uh, and I'm more interested in, in gaining these rich descriptions from them. Yeah. Um, and it would, be pos it would be probably impossible to say something about their, uh, yeah, their mind really, because I've asked them and they have reported oh, but, but to me. But uh, cognitive psychologists would be doing that all the time. They would yeah. be uh, doing experiments on yeah. you know, uh, showing different angles of the mm. blue whale, to which one makes you happier. Or yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, well, okay, but in this, I think, uh, within this area, uh, there are, for instance, studies showing that um, if pictures are uh, have a blue blue tone instead of a red tone. You're mm. probably more depressed, for instance. Okay. Um, so I mean, looking at those kinds of, of issues yeah. could be this cognitive. But but in those the, the other question that comes up is: Would you use a naturalistic data collection or would you use experimental data collection? Um, well, I wouldn't know. That's not <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that that's not the kind of. of does blue work. make you happier? Mm. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, if I were to do something like that, I would uh, probably go to to Twitter and oh. and scrape a lot of tweets to oh. get some sort of patterns and generalizable oh. um, okay. yeah. um, possible yeah. findings. Yeah. Maybe mm. just something to think about. Mm. Social networks. We've talked a little bit about that mm. in terms of tying the group together. Do you think that it, Instagram does tie the group together? Um, the small group. Yeah, especially now, uh, as we have uh, uh, stories and uh, mm. uh, instant okay. messaging and stuff. Mm. So people have a, a greater variety of, of sort of interactional uh, affordances or, mm. or tools or okay. features. Mm. Mm. And then we talked uh, just, just before about uh, social broader social institutions, mm. and so I'll, I'll let you off the hook on that. <laughs> But I've got another question. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> You're happy for this? Yeah. yeah. You doing okay over there? <laughs> um, you talk, uh, you present the four P's model, which is planning, producing, posting, and partaking. Um, I, whenever I see that use of alliteration, I think, okay, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. uh, and you so, uh, the, the, when you write using alliteration that way, you almost put yourself in a straitjacket. Mm -hmm. I've got three of the P's, but I have to find a fourth one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that, that, the partaking was uh, interaction for a while. But then I realized that okay, I'm trying to say that this You're answering my is question, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh -huh. okay. But does that, you know, I, I've, been, I've had a lot of fun writing this question because you, know, <laughs> you, you sort of put yourself... You, you, you strain <laughs> into a word that yeah. doesn't really fit. Mm -hmm. And I was going to ask you, which of those P's wouldn't you uh, use? And you, you mm -hmm. answered my question, the, the partaking. Mm -hmm. uh, and wha what was the word you used? Uh, uh, interaction uh, before. Okay. And so, but then I thought, well, this PhD thesis is about the interaction. Yeah. So I'm so not sure that it, yeah. it okay, really yeah. only goes on there. Yeah. I know, but, but you know, in just sort of academic or, or liter in a literary sense, 
alliteration like that is a good thing because mm. you get a nice snappy sort of easy thing to remember. Mm. Uh, but sometimes you have to sort of strain and push uh, yeah. to get into that. It could be an old uh, Kotler leftover for okay. me from uh, <laughs> marketing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, who was viewing the material of these that these 12 uh, sent out? These Your 12 interview or your 16, I suppose. Mm, the data, you mean? Yeah. Or who, yeah. Who, who was on the other side of the Instagram? Did you ever find out who, what their uh -huh. sense of who those people were? Uh, so you mean their audiences and their followers? Or yeah, uh, yeah, what was their sense of that? Um, well, there was a specific question um, in the first uh, set of data mm -hmm. asking about who do you follow and who follow you. Mm. And there were these uh, general answers, uh, friends and family, uh, some companies that I'm interested in, uh, both ways, both both following and, and being followed by. Okay. Um, and then they talked, of course, about differences within uh, Instagram and Twitter, for okay. instance, and, and keeping Instagram much closer. Um, okay, the, the population, or it was a lot tighter there. Yeah, okay. yeah. I think that might have to do with, I mean, when, when Facebook came, everyone uh, you knew or have had ever known, <laughs> mm. you added. Mm. And then when Instagram came, people were being more selective because mm -hmm. we didn't have to add everyone. So people kept it, uh, kept the networks a bit more tight. But, but on the, on in, one, in one sense, there's the people you sort of imagine they're there. There's that group of however many hundred that you've said yes mm. to is uh, who are there. And then there's the algorithm that picks out another batch. Mm. What was people's perception, your uh, interviewees, what was their perception? Mm. Which one of those did they imagine that they were sending the picture of the whale to? Mm. Well, in the first uh, interviews, uh, they were talking more about Instagram and their Instagram users there. Mm. Uh, and in the second data set, they were talking more broadly about, um, um, yeah, about, about more general social mm. media use. But I, I think that, uh, I mean, as the example in paper uh, two, Mm. the Instagram museum paper, oh. uh, where we show this cross-platform um, interaction. So I, I think it's, I think that people perceive their, sort of their social network uh, in a more broader sense, uh, not necessarily um, narrowed to one specific platform, okay. but rather their, uh, their group or their friends, mm. and then not really uh, only the followers on a certain platform. Okay. Mirka Mariotto and, and, and Danny Miller talk about polymedia. Yeah. Have you, does this apply in any way to the work? I, I understand that you focus very much on in Instagram, but mm. you're now you're describing polymedia mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, I mean, that's uh, sort of using and relating uh, different uh, media to mm, each other mm. and using them uh, in parallel, oh. right? Okay. Or, mm. um, but they were describing this um, media ideologies, which uh, Ilana Gershon talks about, okay. uh, how they prefer different uh, or certain channels over others, mm. for instance, and they, they keep uh, uh, a certain kind of friends on one platform and they mm. have a certain type of interaction on other platforms. Okay. Mm. So they talked more about that in 2017. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I'm just uh, I'm getting down towards the end. Mm? Are you glad to hear that? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want more? Well, uh, in that <laughs> No, but um, please carry on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, on the first paper, you uh, you use Peter Vorder's uh, uh, permanently online, permanently connected, mm -hmm. and in his def def definition of what that is is there's there's two parts to it. We often have a close relationship with our phones, and there's the implicit expectation by others that we are indeed available. Mm -hmm. So there's there's sort of two sides to that. Yeah. 
one of the things in, in your uh, uh, document, you do a very good job of the first part, the, the way people interact with their devices. But then I'm, I'm, I think I'm pushing a little bit further out into the, you know, this is me as the sociologist. Mm -hmm. What's going on out on the other side? Mm -hmm. you know, the, the expectations that mm -hmm. other people have uh, uh, about, you, mm -hmm. you know, the public on the other side. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned this in your talk the other mm. day about uh, uh, me being a problem to you if I don't have a phone, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. uh, so those kind of, of um, situations uh, occurred. Mm. It's not something that I've. Um, I don't think I've written specifically about that, but of course that's in there uh, mm -hmm. as well, and that could be further discussed and further analyzed. Mm. Uh, but I guess it has to do with, with uh, keeping a quite uh, a smaller sample and having them describe... Uh, uh, I mean, they would describe expectations of others. Mm. Um, how they felt uh, that they had to account for themselves somehow? Yeah, how they... Uh, I mean, um, there were expectations of spending a lot of time, for instance. So the woman who had two kids, mm. she described this, for instance, that uh, if she saw she saw her best friend having uh, bought a new house mm -hmm. uh, and then she felt that it wouldn't be enough just to like so she waited to react until she had uh, time to call her instead okay. uh, because she knew that that would be inappropriate just, sort of, just to like, just just to like. Yeah. and then after uh, uh, hanging the phone up uh, she uh, went in to like so okay. then it was okay, but she had to do the other thing first because that's more important. It was more superficial, or it'd be almost an insult, or, or yeah, yeah, or, yeah, yeah. And she talked about this being, yeah, uh, being important. Oh. So there was this expectation. Okay. Um, no. But I'm going to come back again to the methods question that I've I've sort of been harping on a little mm -hmm. bit. Sometimes when I do these types of analyses, I I think of a structural equation model. Uh, and I think, okay, I'm trying to explain Instagram use at the museum. And I want to, that's the variable that's going up and down over here. What are the other variables that feed into, that will make Instagram use go up and down? Mm. Um. Is it age? Is it... Uh, 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 reciprocity with the mm. with with the social network is it embeddedness in the social network is it uh, socioeconomic status is it mm. gender mm. yes 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 and yes okay <laughs> <laughs> no but uh, uh, I mean of, of, of course they have um, uh, I think that if I were to um, um, find some of the people you have interviewed for instance who have very different mm. uh, life Mm. Uh, I mean, they are, are uh, the people I've followed are, are similar, uh, but of, of course, I mean, age would definitely be one mm. of those aspects. So what would happen with age? Uh, who would be the most Instagram savvy? Mm. Uh, well, looking at like national studies, uh, the age group between 12 and 25, I think. Are, that would are, be top and then it goes yeah, downhill from yeah. there? Yeah. Okay. And then if, if you are over 35 using Snapchat, that's super weird, for instance. Okay. That's good, I don't uh, use Snapchat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so there are the expectations again. Oh. Uh, and there would, I mean, those kind of, of, of uh, large data oh. uh, service would show that. Okay. Um, and Ge of course, education level is... Uh, okay, how does that work? Uh, on, on Twitter, for instance, um, it's mainly people who have uh, some sort of degree using okay. Twitter. Mm. College degree. Sorry? College degree. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. Um, and some sort of influential occupation then, often. Okay. Uh, and Instagram and Facebook is still a bit more um, mainstream. Uh, Gen gender. Gender Instagram is, is uh, uh, a bit more used by women. Okay. Uh, for some reason. Uh, I would be interested in looking at uh, women who are home with their... Uh, children and having that uh, You're expecting it to be more or less use by uh, those women. No, but I'm, I'm thinking about this uh, I mean levels of engagement and there is um, There's an idea that uh, 
uh, influencers reach uh, moms. Uh, okay, but that's that's receiving Im information, not sending it, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, okay. But that could be. I mean, we yeah, talked yeah. about the the girl before who took a cup of coffee yeah. and just went to Instagram just to give a have a good time and get some company and get yeah. some support. And yeah. I mean, uh, again. Um, uh, if we were to look at certain personality traits, I mean, I'm sure that has an effect. Okay. Uh, we, we've seen if, if you're introverted or extroverted, for okay. instance, mm -hmm. and, and that will probably affect the use as well. Okay. Um, and of course, um, some sort of, of digital li literacy or, or mm -hmm. media literacy could be an aspect. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. Okay, because you remember my first question. I wanted uh, you to have a bunch of propositions. You just yeah. gave me a half oh, a dozen. Good. So, so this is a uh, full circle. That's oh, uh, very perfect. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see. Um, now I'm going to move on to uh, the third paper. In terms of the propensity to like, some photos get no likes and sometimes they get a lot. What do you have any sense of why that is? Um, well, there are uh, again expectations. Okay. Uh, and there were That's that reciprocity thing that you Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh. Uh, so a certain kind of pictures are expected to get a certain kind of feedback. Mm. And people are very sensitive. Uh, in terms of, of knowing this and knowing what kind of pictures would accept, mm. uh, generate uh, a certain kind of feedback or a certain number of likes, for instance. Um, uh, so, and what was the question again? <laughs> what what generates likes? I guess yeah, is yeah. basically okay. the yeah yeah. Uh, so it depends. It often depends on the relationship with the person. Uh, posting. Mm. Uh, if we are very close friends, I'm, it's more it's more likely that I like your pictures. Mm. Uh, if I want to gain something from you, uh, mm. perhaps if I want you to like my pictures back, or uh, I want you to give me some kind of shout out or something, mm -hmm. I might be eager to like your pictures. Yeah. But I'm just thinking, I'll, you know, if I have some sort of an angry outburst of uh, today was just the worst day in my life, and I just want to go open a bottle of whiskey and, uh, and, and have a photograph with that, the caption or something. Mm. I, did, I doubt that that would get many likes. Mm. Uh, people or, sometimes or use reactions, the, yeah. Yeah, people sometimes use the pressing like and then putting a comment there that says, okay. I don't mean that I like this, I just want to show you that I see you. Sort because of. in Instagram there's only liking, there's not that range of possibilities Reactions. that you have in, uh, exactly. in, in, in Facebook. Yeah. Exactly. So it's either up or down. Yeah. yeah. So okay. it's either a like or a comment. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes people post a comment instead. Mm. And usually those kind of, of, of sad postings mm. usually get more comments mm. than your average post Okay. as well. So they get less likes and, and more comments. Mm -hmm. But then also if, if I said, okay, uh, uh, my my mother died yesterday. I would not necessarily get likes, but I would get a lot of reaction to that, probably a lot of from yeah. from certain groups. Yeah. If I say something political, mm -hmm. a little bit edgy political, I probably wouldn't get very much reaction to that, right? Yeah. Uh, but if I uh, posted a picture, I saw this beautiful flower in the sunshine in this world, yeah. uh, then I'd get a lot. Mm -hmm. oh. So I get, guess that would relate to the platform vernacular mm. as well. I mean, that people know that how, what, what kind of uh, pictures to post and what kind of content to post. Mm. Uh, and also, I mean, if we look at Twitter, for instance, where it's, it's possible to share, you can comment and share, you can retweet with mm -hmm. a comment, for instance, you get the spreadability. Yeah. You don't get that on Instagram. So mm. of course that affects Okay. I mean, the kind of content as well. If you want a discussion, you might post this on Facebook or Twitter instead. Mm. Um, so I, I think people do these kind of, of um, where they value um, mm. the content and then decide upon uh, which platform to, to post it on. Okay. 
I'm coming down to the end. What do you think is your major contribution? Um, what are you going to tell your grandchildren? That <laughs> my dissertation was about. Yeah. <laughs> No, but and I, I think and that Instagram. What is that? Yeah, what is that even? <laughs> Cameras, phones. Well, uh, no, but I think that showing that uh, social media use uh, can be, or people can use social media on very different levels of engagement or very different ways, uh, which requires us to to think about what is it that we mean really when mm. we talk about social media use, because this is not a a new thing anymore. This is in society now. And mm. uh, what are the consequences of this and stuff? So when we talk about social media use, this is not just uh, an obscure subculture anymore. Mm. Uh, but it's um, it um, it's intertwined into okay. society. Mm. So then, when we talk about social media use, we need to incorporate all these kind of activities, even the more passive ones. I okay. would say that's the main thing. Okay. So, and my takeaways, uh, just, uh, I think my sense of perhaps the weakness is, and I don't know that this is a weakness, but it's, it's something that uh, I caused me to scratch my head a little bit, is just the generalizability. Mm -hmm. It's a relatively small sample mm -hmm. uh, that needs, you know, and you've got some plans about moving on beyond that. I think that that's very good. But the, stre the strength, obviously, is, is the very fine, you know, it, and this this is a sort of a yin-yang thing on, the, or yin-yang is not good and bad, that, but that's, uh, yeah. uh, you know, on the one hand, it's it's, it's extremely tight, focused uh, group, which makes, limits the generalizability, but it, you know, as you mentioned, it, it, it's very fine-grained, uh, and also there's a whole world of complexity in, in all of these things. I think, yeah. you know, part of the challenge in all of this though is to bring it up uh, you know uh, yeah. the, uh, find out what the elements that you can that, that will go further so like i say i'm coming towards the end thank you very much thank you uh, i think it i i enjoyed reading it it was very easy to read uh you know the field and um congratulations so far thank you thank you Thank you very much for a very interesting conversation. Now the floor is yours. Somebody want to start asking questions or? I think the committee. Hey. Um, so first of all, thank you very much. This was a really interesting uh, discussion and I think that uh, um, both Beata and the opponent, uh, um, I, I truly enjoyed uh, all these detailed discussions uh, about the thesis. Um, I also enjoyed reading it, uh, actually for the second time since I was also here during the spring uh, as part of the final seminar and asked uh, some questions um, on a previous version of, of this thesis. Um, nevertheless, uh, I of course have uh, some additional questions, although lots of things have already been discussed. Mm, I think that I'd like to start with uh, sort of an additional, very sort of fundamental question here, and that is, um, can you say something about uh, the object of study? W what is the object of study? And then related to that, what is the level of analysis? Mm. Well, the ob object of study, um, um, museum visitors using their phones to document and share their experiences initially, uh, becoming social media users that were studied uh, in 2017, I would say. And with that, uh, is then the, the level of analysis, is that on the level of the individual or are there other um, levels here as well? Mm, yeah, well, it's, it's um, primarily, of course, the level of, of the, the individual level. Um, and I haven't done any uh, like a network analysis or anything. Um, so it's, 
I'm trying to think if there is, is any other level, really. Uh, but I'm, yeah, them as, as uh, users within their uh, community as well, uh, but especially on, on an in, uh, individual level. Yeah. Because I, I was just thinking that uh, part of the discussion you had towards the end was about sort of how is society changing and so on, and maybe that is on a different level of analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, and also I'm thinking that um, some of um, the elements or the factors you point out are really broad, uh, like age, occupation, gender, education, uh, and so on. Um, and maybe it's hard to, to move from um, these subjects you have been uh, studying so close to to delivering such broad, um, um, yeah, um, statements about mm. about these things. Mm. How how do we want to comment on that? Yeah, what well, I I definitely think that, I mean, uh, smaller samples uh, could be supported by studies of, of larger data sets. Of course, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of studies have been on on uh, great amounts of tweets for instance, um, and either looking at uh, a great number of tweets or looking at uh, a number of, s of likes, as I mentioned initially as well, uh, and looking more at, at, at a great number that would support my studies, of course. Uh, and that could also be, I mean, could be combined with looking at specific likes and what do they mean and how do people reason on this, um, for instance. Okay, um, and also if we stay then with the, the level of the analysis of the individual, which I think really reflects what you have been up to here, uh, and then if we sort of revisit this planning, um, uh, producing, posting, partaking model, uh, and it makes sense, it's sort of on the level of the individual as well in this model, but then I wonder, is it a theoretical model or is it more of a pedagogical model? Are you just trying to describe something or are you also mm. trying to explain something with this model? Mm. Mm. I'm trying to, to theorize the practices, not the individuals. Uh, so I mean, there are uh, Brandsek's uh, studies, for instance, where he talks about these user types the socializer, the advanced uh, lurker, for instance. So that's a way of, of, I guess, theorizing the individual. And this is more of, of theorizing the practices. Uh, and I th think that can be done this way. Um, so then that brings me to my last question, I think. And that is, OK, so we, we view this as a theoretical model. Um, but then in, what was it, chapter three, um, no, sorry, uh, chapter four, where you have the different theoretical perspectives. Mm -hmm. Can you say something about how these perspectives inform your model? Mm -hmm. uh, and then the second one here is, uh, you have, during the defense, talked about a lot of things that are not actually covered by this model, or maybe, maybe it was covered, but sort of how you choose not to post, uh, not to spam, not to like, remove pictures and so mm. on. Where is all this like non-use or other ways of not partaking or is that also maybe partaking but in a mm. in more passive way? Mm. Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, I think it comes out of me looking at use uh, and having them talk about use. Uh, and as I mentioned, I would um, love to do a study on non-use uh, to get um, more detailed uh, descriptions of that. Um, <coughs> but I think that when I talk about uh, likes, uh, a, a non-like or an absent like is, is an uh, activity as well. It's perceived as an act. Uh, so I think I mentioned liking within partaking. I mean, seeing a picture and deciding not to like is an act as well that would be included there. Uh, so I, I think that these kind of non, the non um, 
yeah, that would be a, a different analysis, of course. Uh, Non-posting is very concrete. Non-liking could be included in partaking, but that's a good comment. I would, uh, I would think about that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, thank you. Um, thank you for the interesting discussion um, and for the opportunity to read the thesis. Um, I've written out like four questions, but maybe I will cut one off. We'll see how <laughs> long answering them takes. Um, um, I also wanted to kind of talk a little bit about the about your use of concepts. Um, so you introduce both the community of practice and the affinity space, um, and you acknowledge that um, affinity spaces were a critique of communities of practice, um, but yet you kind of seem to use both in an almost collapsed way when Jim G was quite adamant that communities of practice is a bad theory to explain things that happen on the internet. Mm -hmm. So can you explain your logic or justify why you, why you kind of use them side by side? Um, yeah, well, I mean, so the difference is uh, mainly has to do with uh, whether it is, is a um, meeting place with the purpose of bonding or not, right? Um, and communities of practice is about participating and interacting with a social and or interactional purpose. And affinity spaces is usually um, people meeting up uh, around a certain interest. I would say that uh, a hashtag could be sort of a, an affinity space within a community of practice, because that could be people um, yeah, following a hashtag within their community. Uh, so even if they are at Instagram to mainly bond and be social, uh, they have sort of sub spaces such as a uh, formation around a uh, hashtag, for instance. So there are both kind of, of both kinds of practices going on, um, but I, I acknowledge them being different. Okay, thank you. Um, then another question, um, again, conceptual. Um, I would like you to um, tell us how you define norms and how you define morality and what is the difference between the two because um, in the beginning of the uh, work you uh, speak quite a lot of norms but then in the discussion um, you uh, quite suddenly introduce this um, idea of morality of social media use. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so since I haven't used them, how do I say, I have used them more in a everyday kind of speech. I haven't unpacked these uh, the concepts, and I haven't uh, used them that way. So to me, they are synonyms. Um, so I haven't really reflected upon that. Uh, they are related. Mm, they are. I mean, they are both products of the practices. Uh, they are related to the idioms that people develop. Thank you. Um, oh, sorry, I have many pages. <laughs> um, and then um, I was very fascinated uh, by, um, in the end of the, the kappa, or whatever we call it, um, how you describe the differentiated um, approach to practices, so, or the articulations, um, differentiated articulations of social media use. You know, sometimes they say they're using social media, sometimes they say they're scrolling or checking or posting, mm -hmm. and sometimes they say they're Instagramming or Facebooking. So um, I would like for you to explain a little bit the what you think the reasons for the differentiation of these articulations are, and also what the implications of these kind of different ways of articulating use are, mm -hmm. uh, from the perspective of the people that you studied. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, what a good question. Uh, I think, um, well, I mean, the, the verbifications or Snapchatting or Facebooking is of course related to a certain platform. Uh, and I think that is how they talk about it. Uh, when they say Snapchatting, I mean, they, they talk about using Snapchat. Uh, when they, I mean, it's them talking about use on different levels, I think. Uh, when they say checking, that can be checking any uh, application, which it, it usually, usually is because it was the phone. Um, when they talk about liking, that's a bit trickier. Um, so, I mean, I guess the, the, the explanation from them has been, uh, or would be, um, that when they talk about use of a specific platform, they usually talk about Facebooking or Snapping uh, or uh, similar. And when they talk more general, uh, they use these other kind of, of uh, words, such as use or checking or scrolling or whatever. Uh, right. So I think um, since you, you were talking about how to take this forward, um, that would be a, a, a way to take the model forward towards greater theoretical mm. um, power. Mm. Um, because it um, through a kind of rhetorical or a metaphorical lens almost forces your analytical gaze at either the device mm. or the branded platform mm -hmm. um, or a haptic um, way of using it. So I think it it's, um, has a lot of potential yeah. to keep thinking about. Yeah, definitely. Do I have time for one more question? Yes. OK. Um, I'm sorry, this is again a, a theory head question. Um, so you, you say that uh, an idiom of practice is the agreed upon appropriate social use of technology that people create, learn, and negotiate through asking for advice and sharing stories with each other. And then later on, you say that uh, the agreed upon uses for affordances in social media can be considered in terms of idioms of practice. So what does that mean then? Can you, can you explain <coughs> again how you see idioms of practice and affordances going together? Because I, I feel like there's a, a slight issue with how you use affordances in text. Like you conceptualize it in the beginning, but then mm -hmm. how you use the word affordance throughout the text is a little bit confusing. OK. Uh, so the first thing that you read was Ilana Gershon's definition of idioms of practice, I think. Um, and the second one was my own words, yeah. Um, so what I'm the point I'm trying to make is that um, the use is shaped both by uh, uh, the relationships and the technology. So uh, people come to Instagram with their relationships and they have interactional patterns which shape the use. And there are also affordances within the technology that shapes use. Hmm? Okay, thank you very much for inviting me here. Um, and thank you for a really good discussion with a lot of tricky questions, which makes it, well, I guess I have some, a few <laughs> questions left. Uh, okay, so I have um, two, maybe three, depends on the question. Um, first, it's a question about the relation between the kappa and the articles. Yeah. Um, I... Generally, I think that the dissertation is well, well written and well disposed, but I thought somehow that sometimes the, the articles were a little bit weak in theory, and this means that you have to back up for that in the kappa, and you do have an, a theoretical chapter in the kappa. Uh, however, uh, it's not always evident to me uh, in what ways the theories in the kappa 
um, have bearings on the articles, how they uh, fit together, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. So my question is, were there other theories that, that you um, considered when you wrote the Kappa? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, um, coming from media communication, I looked at uses and gratification, for instance. Uh, I've looked at symbolic interactionism. Um, I mentioned literacy before, and that was a way of uh, also an idea I had. What happened now? Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> uh, one thing that I really liked about the, the um, uh, dissertation in specifically Article 4, and you, I think you touch upon it in Article 1 as well, uh, your discussion about passive and active users, and that was something that I would really have liked to see more of, mm -hmm. because um, in, in, in media and communication studies, we, we um, you see it like a pr process where um, the audience used to be passive, uh, mm. like mm. Uh, yeah, the passive yeah. audience, and a development has occurred where it's becoming more and more active with mm. social media and so on. And what you uh, um, write here is that, well, uh, somehow we see a, a movement back towards the, the more passive use mm -hmm. again, and mm -hmm. that, I think, that would be something to, to uh, I would like to have seen you go more into that, mm -hmm. but I also think that uh, the, the Toffler uh, mm -hmm. theory that you, the, mm -hmm. that you connect to that, uh, it's a bit old, mm -hmm. and you have uh, later theories mm -hmm. that Axel Brun has... Somewhere. Yes, think, yeah. yes, mm. exactly what, what I was uh, mm. fishing at. Mm. <laughs> uh, I think you would have gotten more help that with that discussion. So yeah. if you were to proceed with this work, I would really yeah. um, like to see something more about that. Ah. Okay, so my last question then. Um, the opponent talked a lot about generalizability. Uh, and I agree with you that, well, it's not always necessary to have this large sample and representativity and, and so on and to do statistical generalizations. But what I would like to have seen in the dissertation, uh, you can also do a theoretical uh, generalization, um, yeah, generalization, where instead of making these statistical uh, uh, things, instead you kind of bring back your results to the data, to mm -hmm. the previous research, and let them meet and see, uh, does my re res uh, do my results bring something new to the field? How does it, this affect the previous research? Does the previous research have to be nuanced? Mm -hmm. do the, does the theory have to be developed in some way? Uh, do you have something to say about that? Uh, what your results bring to the field? And do, does it mean that, uh, in what way does it affect previous, res uh, previous mm -hmm. res results and, and theory? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, in terms of idioms of practice, for instance, uh, when this concept, concept was developed in 2010, I think, it was still very early. And uh, Ilana Gershon writes about, about these uh, idioms not being, uh, having been developed yet. Um, and the difficulties for people knowing uh, what to do, uh, when to do what. And there's a lot of uh, misunderstandings and confusions. And I would say that my data shows that people are sometimes pretty clear, even if it's varied, they are sometimes very clear in knowing what to do and knowing which norms or uh, which rules regulate these practices. Uh, so that would be one thing. Um, what else? Uh, uh, Do your data contradict previous research in some point, would you say? Um, yeah, well, previous research, yes, definitely. Uh, I mean, in, in the beginning, likes, for instance, were talked about as uh, lightweight interaction and I would say it's nothing uh, like <laughs> lightweight about this. Uh, and they can, these likes can contain a lot of information. Uh, so that, that's one thing. Um, and um, 
Um, yeah, that's an example. Yeah. Thank you. Hmm? Okay. Hey. Thank you, first of all, for letting me read your interesting work. It's been a really interesting conversation. And um, I had also have some additional questions. Um, and I will mainly focus uh, around the method sec section. Uh, but before I continue, uh, just to um, the questions you got here regarding your study, uh, your contribution in with regard to previous research, I think one of the strengths of your study is the longitudinal uh, character of your study. That makes your study unique. Um, so I would like to congratulate you on that part. Uh, and I also think that is, this is a study that's very much mirror the uh, everyday life of many, many people today and, and also today's society. So that is something when you look back, <laughs> uh, when you get questions from people in 50 years, so, oh, what happened then back then in mm. 2012 <laughs> and 2013 and your uh, defense in 2019. Oh, that's weird life you got there. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, young people in 50 years will probably think that what we do now is quite fun and strange. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so uh, uh, as you know, I'm I'm from the field of education and uh, actually the field of sociology of education. So. Like the opponent, I have some sociological perspective of my reading, and also my first first questions regard. Uh, so it's more of sociological character, and um, I'm very interesting about your sample um, because when looking at the age and also this, what seems to be the social background with regard to the participants' um, uh, occupation and employment. Uh, I would uh, characterize them. They were quite young, uh, as you talked about, but they could also social be categorized as middle class. And uh, yeah, any reflections about that uh, in regard to your, your studies design and actually the outcome of your study? Yeah, mm -hmm. the results. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, they, they are representing a, a quite specific group and uh, they are uh, from a, a limited geography or they are from Gothenburg uh, and they are sort of in the same age and they are I mean as I mentioned uh, Twitter uh, main Twitter users have a, a certain uh, degree of education for instance yeah. uh, and so that that would also um, that also had affected on me recruiting them as I recruited them on Twitter. Um, so this is a specific group. But again, this was in 2012 uh, and they were heavy users at the time. So they represent sort of the experts. Uh, some of them were, not, not all of them were this uh, heavy in their use. But so uh, to, to gain insights on use, uh, I would have to talk to to specific users. And so, of course, um, they, they, were, uh, they were early adapters and they were a specific group, but they also gained these kind of, of insights I would not have gotten probably from, from a very different group. Uh, but then again, of course, I could have looked at uh, a greater variety and I, I would love to do that in the future, so. Yeah, yeah, that of course opens up for future research. And mm, you also yeah. talked about uh, uh, the aspect of age, you talked about uh, the opponent meant gender, um, and you also actually discussed uh, educational level, i.e. social class. Um, and you're also involved with this uh, current project about the seniors mm. using of social media that I think is really interesting. So yeah, there are, I mean, I think you have um, many opportunities to, to uh, conduct future studies with other groups in the society, um, in, in, in many many aspects. Uh, uh, my second questions uh, regard uh, is actually regarding ethical issues. 
uh, you are using the authentic using names. Mm? How come? Mm? Uh, this was probably the only question I have prepare, prepared for, so that's good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. No, uh, but thank you for uh, raising this. Okay, so, no, but I mean, or at least I've thought about it. So, uh, in the beginning, uh, we had these informed consent forms, of course, uh, and we had different boxes. Do you want your name to be visible, do you want us to hide your name, etc. Uh, and they all wanted their names showing. So they were sort of proud of their work, they were proud of their pictures, and they, they weren't um, um, bothered at all. And they, they, uh, they wanted this themselves. But then, uh, as I was transcribing the data for the likes, uh, or looking at analyzing the likes, the, the data for the like paper, I thought that they were was a bit more sensitive uh, data, uh, and so that's why I sort of I adjusted the names then, uh, and because they were talking about uh, feeling bad when not gaining enough likes and stuff, and so I thought that that maybe they didn't really understand that I was gonna write about that. So that was just me uh, taking an extra precaution, sort of. Okay, thank you. And yeah, I will go on with the third question because you uh, uh, awakened my curiosity on page 81, uh, where you uh, refer to a, a paper mm -hmm. uh, that is not part of your thesis, but that you have been that you have published together with Hillman and Weilenman. Yeah, this uh, pancake, uh, 22 likes on a pancake uh, paper. Yeah. Yes, uh, and uh, you talk about, um, yeah, you have uh, developed different ideas in this paper. Uh, and you just, yeah, yeah, what ideas? Can you just uh, tell us a little about mm -hmm. us about this, just briefly? Yeah, uh, these reflections or this paper was a workshop paper at CHI. Uh, so we were sort of just uh, reflecting upon the difficulties of, of trying to um, study, as Hogan mentions, uh, a moving target and the difficulties of, of scoping a study, uh, especially in terms of uh, time and temporality. Uh, so we kind of played with different ways of, of trying to scope a study when it's uh, it's not um, uh, obvious how to do it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> More questions? Hey, Beata. Hey, Matthias. Uh, thank you as well for a, a wonderful discussion. Um, my question is, um, I guess shortly it's what is social media, um, but longer I think maybe it has to do with generalizability, which you've been kind of stumbling upon quite a bit as well. It's like, because what I'm wondering is how much does the findings that you have in this paper translate to different platforms? Mm -hmm. And also like, like current platform, but also future platforms, and mm -hmm. when would it not transfer to them, if it does? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I mean, <coughs> As I have shown, some of the practices are uh, related to and building upon specific features or uh, specific affordances. Um, so sharing, for instance, as we talked about earlier, it's not uh, or it's not built into the technology to be able to regram or re-instagram a picture, right? Uh, so that would be a, a limitation within, uh, or limitation. It's it's not possible on Instagram the same way. Um, but then again, in the likes paper, for instance, it's shown that uh, the relationship between the users is what's uh, specifically important. And so the relationship that we have might be more important than where we 
uh, facilitate this com um, relationship or where we communicate. Uh, so to some extent, the relationship uh, that you have outside of social media uh, is especially important. And sometimes, I mean, it's, as I mentioned uh, w in my answer before that, different affordances and different um, <coughs> social, uh, both the relationships and the technology shapes use, I guess is the, the, the short answer. <laughs> um, and I mean, what we see today is all these social media platforms having similar technical capabilities, right? Uh, but still there are very specific uses on different platforms and that might be leftovers from from the beginning when Instagram was used for pictures and Twitter was used for short uh, comments sort of um, so that it might be a leftover and it might be something that is um, about to change uh, but that will be future studies uh, to look at Hi. Uh, so out of these three areas, what would you like to study further? The, to verify the model towards TikTok, or how users elaborate and choose between different vernaculars when they are to post a photo, or the micro vernaculars of WhatsApp groups? Ah. <laughs> and the third one was micro vernaculars. Yeah, since yes. a lot of people post in WhatsApp groups rather than yeah. to the public. Yeah, I would definitely choose this, the third one. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> More questions? Yeah. What did you say? What would I say would be the? Because they have a lot more data than the interview. Yeah. But often, do you often talk about the interview? Mm. What would you say is the role of the other data you have collected? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, well, the, the, as I call it, ethnographically inspired <laughs> fieldwork, uh, that was sort of to identify, identify hotspots and identify practices within the museum. Uh, so that was to get, to get started, to uh, understand uh, parts of what was going on. Um, and then we uh, collected both uh, the pictures of the people who were interviewed at the museum as well as all of the Instagrams taken at the museum. And this was, um, th this was done initially just to get a, 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 to grasp what was going on. And then as I returned to the same informants uh, doing interviews and doing the stimulated e recall interviews, that became that became important to, uh, so I mean, there are two phases, I talk about two phases, but I could talk about almost three phases, I think, um, with the first uh, ethnographically inspired fieldwork uh, being sort of a, a pre-phase almost. Uh, but since I didn't follow up on that data and I talk about change over time and uh, things like that, I, I didn't really think that I could Mm, yeah, talk about the change in, in that um, sense. <laughs> you won. Yeah, so thank you for a very interesting discussion. So, Biat, I was thinking one of the kind of common questions on PhD defenses is kind of impact for practice that the research might have. And I was thinking that that m I usually think that question is 
less interesting. But in your case, I think it's very interesting. So could your research, for example, inform policymakers concerning social media or businesses dealing with influencers and so on? How could it inform or enlighten or improve those kind of practices? Mm. Or can it or should it? Mm. That's a good question. Um, yeah, well, I mean, widening the idea of what social media use is would do this, I think. I mean, incorporating these passive uh, kinds of engagement um, requires us to measure use in a different way. I mean, there are business models uh, and there are calculations uh, measuring um, lost likes, for instance. But there are also studies showing that uh, likes, the number of likes is not important. Uh, and I mean, that would change the situation if, if companies are counting likes, for instance, as some sort of feedback on an advertising campaign. Uh, but my work and others' work show that the number of likes, that doesn't matter to people. Um, and also if, if, I mean, coming from, from business administration, I'm, I'm interested mainly in the, in the business aspect then. Um, and also, um, I mean, if we talk about time spent on a special or a specific uh, platform, that doesn't really say anything. Uh, again, if, if, if a lot of the activities that goes on aren't measurable in, in, uh, in terms of time. Okay, a last question from someone. Okay. It's late on Friday afternoon, so we formally close this part of the of the, 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 the <laughs> TCC uh, defense, and uh, uh, the committee will uh, will join and continue discussion for some time. How long that discussion will take, uh, we don't know. Uh, and sometimes discussions continue because there are very many interesting things to, <laughs> to pursue. <laughs> sometimes it's very short, we never know. Uh, uh, you are all invited to the coffee room where there are some uh, servings, I guess. Thank you very much, Beata. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.